Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We're live. Yeah. Lovely. Well, welcome everyone. And thank you very much for what I know will be an amazing time here with myself, Louise Cohen, and Rachel Goodwin. What we have for you today is something very exciting. We have done this a few times before, and the insights that come through are just incredible. What will happen today is I will interview Lady Sarah, Ascended Master Sarah, and Rachel will combine a mixture of sharing her own insights. So thank you very much in advance for that, Rachel. And also she will channel life for us all. Just to give you a little bit of background, the questions were submitted by people who are part of the Sarah Sacred Healing Group. And I've compiled them all into two main categories. The first category are questions all to do with the Ascension. And then after that, we shall ask questions about Sarah, specifically with her role, to find out a little bit more about what she's doing behind the scenes um, for us all. So is there anything that you'd like to add, Rachel, before I begin? I'm so excited. Mm. <laughs> I know in a minute I'll be like channeling and going into a zone, but I sort of, yeah, it's a bit like going to a party or something, isn't it, Louise? Yeah, it, it's it's like as if I when I was looking at the questions um, a few hours ago, and I was thinking, yeah, they're just such a vibrant mix of things that people have have thought about. So I'm really interested to see what insights come through yourself and Sarah today. So mm. thank you, thank you very much, and thank you also to the people that kindly submitted the questions because it's about helping everyone on our ascension journey, learning from each other. Oh, so I'm going to start with lighting a candle and anyone else can do this as well if they if they want to if you like candles so I'm just going to light this little one here it's just a tea light inside a, a green glass so this is this is one of my ways of calling Sarah in and I just very simply just hold the intent that when I light it Sarah comes in so it is there we are I tell you what Louise I'm just going to get myself a blanket because I'm just a little bit I'm just a little bit cold hang on I'll just be a second okay. whilst we're waiting for uh, Rachel to come back for those of you who are not familiar Rachel's written a book called Sarah's Little Book of Healing I'll just show it to you there available on Amazon both as a Kindle in paperback. I have both. I started off with the Kindle version and loved it so much that when the paperback became available and it's full of really fascinating insights about Sarah and the work she does and meditations and different ways to connect with Sarah that you can dip in and out to. Sometimes I just will show interest in a particular chapter and other times I'll look for something with more purpose. So it's available from Amazon, Sarah's Little Book of Healing by Rachel Goodwin. Just gonna, just gonna pop onto Facebook and just see okay. if there's people on there. Well, obviously there's people on there, but there's people on there saying hello. So we're broadcasting in three places today, Louise. We're on the Ascended Master Sarah page. We're on the, the uh, Sarah's Sacred Healing Group. And we're on YouTube as well. <laughs> so we're Zooming all over the place today. And it's really wonderful, are. actually, that you're able to record the interview so that people might find that if they can't join us live, they can catch up. And even if they have watched live, they might find as part of it they want to re-listen to as the information comes through. They might want to just enjoy it live and then watch watch it again. So that's great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah, that's a really good point, Louise, because it's and so if people want to find it on YouTube, it's YouTube forward slash Rachel Goodwin, R-A-C-H-E-L-G-W-D-W-I-N, because it's so much easier to find things on YouTube. Once things mm -hmm. have gone on Facebook, they're just like in the mass, aren't they? Yeah, they can and be also, very easily lost. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the YouTube recordings are actually much better quality as well. So, so that there's Belinda. Hello, Belinda. <laughs> Thank 
you for joining and Annette, there's Annette and Deb. And I don't know about the I don't know about the Sarah one. Have you got have you got anything? Can you see any of them? I have a look. If you if you keep an eye on the um the Sarah's healing group, I can keep an eye on the okay. I can keep Yes, it's showing it. it's showing us live on the Ascended Master Sarah page. You keep an eye on the Sarah okay. Sacred Healing Circle group, okay. Louise, and you okay. can I'll watch the comments on the page and you watch the comments on the group. There's Leonie. Hi, Leonie. <laughs> so nice. So nice to see all the familiar faces there. That's lovely. Oh, there I go. It's, quite, it's funny because when we look, on, it's always a bit of a time lag. And I yeah. just saw myself walk off and come back. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you've mastered how to be in two places at the same time. <laughs> in, which case, in which case, I'm going to put that down as an additional question. <laughs> it was a bit existential. It's like, oh my God. No, yeah. Saying that, oh, I did this, you know, that interview I did with Lee this week? Yeah. There's this fabulous interview with Lee. There was one lovely thing that I forgot to mention. And we were talking about Santa Marie de la Mer, which is the place in France where um, Mary Magdalene is said to have landed the three Marys in the boat, or in one of the stories, one of, one of, the, one of the women is Sarah. There's a couple of legends that Sarah walked on water. And I love that. I love that because, you know, they're talking, she's a Languedoc saint. She's not an official Catholic mm saint there is a saint sarah in the catholic church but she's somebody different and i really love that i really i really love that um reference to sarah walking on water because of course that's what yeshua did i always find actually walking near water is a great way for people to connect with sarah speaking yeah. from my own experience yeah there is a lot of watery energy Very much so. yeah. and i actually found because so years ago, I had this chant come into my head. I had started working with Sanskrit chants, and I had this Sanskrit chant come into my head about Sarah, and it was Om Shri Sariye, Sariye. And Sariye means, in Sanskrit, like the infinite ocean. It's very sort of a, a cosmic, like, mm. to this, like, infinite ocean. And I was like, oh! Oh, yeah, without really knowing what it meant. <laughs> I could just feel the mm. truth in it somehow. And yeah, it feels very expansive just listening to you You say it just, just now. Yeah, because that's it. She's representing an archetypal face of the divine. Mm. You know, this is sort of a light that's shining through her. But let's start. Let's start, Louise. What's the first question? Yeah. Okay. The first question, Sarah. Many people are currently experiencing ascension symptoms, such as anxiety and anger, which are proving a challenge to manage. Could you share some insights on how to deal with them in order to help ourselves and also for us to assist others? Thank you. I'm really feeling our energy is coming in strongly now. So when I channel, I do go into a light state of trance. So I was sort of go a bit floppy for a moment and then be Don't worry. For a few, <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. I haven't passed out or anything. And then and then when I start talking again, it'll be Sarah coming through. And then after I finish talking, I will come back and we can me and Louise can have a bit of discussion. And also if you want to make comments about it as well, that would also be lovely. So I'll just I'll just go quiet for a few moments now. Blessings, I am Sarah. This is such a huge evolutionary change that you are going through at this time. It is really phenomenal. Of course, you are in the midst of it, living right in the middle of it. And you can't see with that perspective from above 
just how massive this process is that you're going through. Although, of course, many of you sense this and know this deep in your hearts and know that you need support. You know that you need assistance. And we are here. You are not alone. The ascension symptoms that are commonly experienced are often about needing to come into alignment. And in truth, this is at its most simplest, the evolutionary change that you are going through. You are coming into alignment with all aspects of your being from the highest to the lowest. Now, when I use that terminology, I am not casting any shadows of judgment that the highest is the best and the lowest is the worst. It is simply a way of describing these different levels of your being, all of which are equally valued, equally necessary and equally loved by the divine. And so must you love all of these aspects of your being. You are here to become fully human, to invite the wholeness of your divinity into your humanity. Integration is the key. Now, if you are able to call on my energy, this is what I suggest. You can imagine my light, my ray, my spirit coming and standing with you. Now, I am able to be present upon the etheric layer of the earth. This is quite unusual for an ascended master and is related to my capacity, capacity to be integrated with all things. This means that I can affect your etheric body in a way that many higher beings cannot. I can come closer to the physical layer because I am in all of the spheres. There is no vibrational dimension I cannot connect to because I hold this energy of integration and oneness. In me, all things are at oneness. So as I was saying, invite my spirit in my light, my presence. And imagine my light shining down from above your head and bringing you in a state of alignment. Starting from your highest chakra, going down to low, lowest chakra. Ascension symptoms are caused by a dissonance between the different chakras in your body, all of which exist in different vibrations and different dimensions, which is a little mind boggling if one thinks about it too much and is not really important. What is important is that you consider your intent to come in to alignment from the top to the bottom. And so I would simply ask you to do as I suggested, call in my spirit, call in my light above you and my light beneath you and ask that I help you to come into alignment 
and see yourself between these two points of light, straightening up, as it were. Parts that were a little too far to the left or to the right or the front or the back. See them come in into oneness throughout your energy body. Now, of course, there will be reasons why those things are out of alignment. But doing this meditation will help those things come up into your greater consciousness. And it may be a good idea to pull an oracle card or a rune or whichever tools you like to use when you do this meditation because you are out of alignment. That will give you a clue as to what it is that you need to focus on, what you need to bring your awareness to that will help you come into greater alignment. There is also my net of light, which you can pull around you to keep your energy body in greater integrity. As I said, the ascension symptoms are caused by different vibrations of your energy being, being pulled too much this way or that way and not being in harmony and balance. And it is very difficult when you're living in the world as you are, being so bombarded by many different frequencies, downloads coming in, lower vibrations coming from this way and that. It is a huge challenge that you are passing through and you should not blame yourself in any way for struggling with these things. However, you can call upon me and ask me to place my net of light around you. This is a little like the starry sky at night and it comes and sits around your energy body. So you can just simply imagine in it with little points of light in the night sky, a comforting cloak that helps give you some protection from the bombardment of the outside world and helps you maintain the energy integrity within your own light body. You are going through huge changes in your light body at this time. And this is something that I will talk more about in the months and years ahead. But for now, this is enough to know that you can call on me and that I will give you assistance. It doesn't matter if you call on me and you feel no difference because you wonder if I am really there at all. If you call on me, I am there. Sometimes for various reasons, it could be different for you to sense things in a very sensitive way. But have faith, have belief, have the knowing that you are a powerful being. And if you call for help to me, I will be there whether you feel it or not. So know that I am always there to help you. I have come forward now for this time particularly. I have been waiting in the wings. I am an ascended master for this time, this now, this age, this eon, I am here, I am here, I am here. Take a deep breath and feel this reality within yourself that all is well, all is well, all is well. 
The divine's perfect plan is built upon a rock. And everything is happening within divine timing and divine grace. You hold your own perfect piece of the plan, each of you perfectly unique, a perfect piece of the puzzle that together makes up the whole. Comfort your fears, assuage your fears. You cannot know the whole, you cannot see the perspective and that's okay. But know that the divine can and you are each a spark of the divine and my blessings are upon you. I am Sarah and these are the words that I wish to speak for now. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, amen. Well, that seemed quite long. <laughs> it was long and it was incredibly informative um, and a very, very helpful response to people about the essential symptoms and the importance of aligning our chakras and how Sarah can come along if we set the intention to invite her in to help us, to call for her light, that she will assist us with aligning mm -hmm. our chakras and then cast the, the net of light around us and I've used the net of light quite extensively with working whilst working with Sarah and it's a fabulous tool in its own right and you can even put the the light this net of light over a situation or a group of people to to protect them it's a, a great um, explanation that she's offered thank you very very much for your thoroughness and attention to detail both of you thank you I got this sense of, of just the calmness and the stability of her energy as just being so mm. rock solid. And mm. I've had this image in the past of, and I've even looked it up. I have to say I did fail physics. <laughs> I failed my physics O-level twice even. And um, so it's not my strong point, but I've had this, um, very clear image of Sarah. It's almost like being at the eye of the storm. She's in the center of the circle and it's so like perfectly, there's just this incredible stillness. And then everything around her is in dynamic activity. And I, I, I you know, I know that means stuff, but um, you know, it's almost like a centrifuge or something because she's very magnetic and you know kind of draws things to us but I think when we call on her we sort of we can borrow that you know um energy presence that she has and it is a line in the chakras but it's more than that as well it is like our whole being is sort of you know, all of the different parts of us between our earthly selves and our higher selves and the soul. And I mean, there's so much more to us than we can possibly understand while we're having these these earth lives. It like, yeah, it's like everything is just like coming into this like oneness or something. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. But it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's like we, we are really multi-dimensional beings, and that's yeah. really what she was she was reminding us of, and that's her role is to help all of this integrate into to oneness, so that yeah. we do become fully aligned. Yeah, that was absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. So Deb is saying beautiful channeling. Thank you. Mm. Yes, thank you, Deb. And of course, like when I'm channeling. It's not just the words, it's the energy. I know I always say this, but I, you know, I feel I want to repeat it every time because it's just so true. It's the energy that each of you are receiving. And I remember years ago when I first went to um, St. Michael's in Yule, which is the first place I experienced somebody channeling. And I could, it was like, I could just feel like this energy like beam like coming straight into my third eye and I was like because oh, I didn't I wasn't expecting to like really experience anything 
And I was like, I could physically feel the channeling energy. And it's like, it sends stuff in. They take this opportunity. It's a bit like having initiations. They take this opportunity to sort of beam to each of us what we need in, in that moment. So you can, and I've experienced this many times, like, you can get your own insights about what I'm saying that I won't get, but that you'll get, you know. And that's why it's quite nice for us to, um, you know, share things and make the comments because we each see slightly from a different angle, you know. Different perspectives. And when you listen to it again, you can often pick up something a little bit different or something that elaborates on what you initially received. Yeah, totally. And that's why, you know, like I've got channelings going back to, I don't know, when was it? 2006. Mm -hmm. I like I go back and read like the old stuff and it's just like, ah. <laughs> so like things that didn't necessarily make that much sense then, it's all come like full circle. And it's like, you know, maybe things I channel now, I'm like, yeah, I sort of know what she means. I can feel, it's like I can feel it in my body. Like, oh yeah, I know just what she means. But my brain sort of going, what? Mm. <laughs> and then, like maybe in another five years or ten years, I can look back and read it and just go, oh, I, you know, because I think that's it. It's like we get the energy first, and then it processes through us, and we sort of create it in our lives, and we get all the intellectual realizations. We make all these things happen, and. Mm. Uh, so it's like it, it's like some magical mystery yeah the, the impressions follow it's like as if everything is in stages and then it all kind of leads on to the next step yeah so what's next louise um are there any dietary changes that sarah would recommend people consider in order to be able to manage these intense energies please okay Welcome, I am Sarah. The food that you eat has immense importance to each of you, probably more than you realise or think about. It might feel a little threatening to some to think about their diet because they are perhaps attached to certain food groups or ways of eating. Sometimes it can also feel overwhelming to have to think about making changes and transformations in your diet. People eat a certain way often from the food that they grew up with from childhood. And so making these shifts is, is more than a simple decision. It requires or can require quite a lot of mental and emotional transformation, as well as time to think about what can be eaten. However, saying that, each of you needs to eat the foods that are right for you. There is no one way of eating, of diet, that is best for everybody. Some people suit a vegetarian diet because their constitution uh, energy is especially suited to it. You have to find what is right for you. It's important then to feel into your body, to use your intuition. But I will say this, that most of you 
deep down, if you haven't already made the dietary changes, you know you need to make, deep down, you know what food is right for you. You know if you are eating too much sugar, dairy, meat, processed foods, and so on and so forth. So this is the thing I would ask of you. And that is to take the next step. What is it? Feel into your body now. What do you eat that you know is not helping you, that you know is placing a burden upon your physical body? Think about your physical body now as something so beloved to you. Maybe like a precious pet or child. Think of your body in this way. Transfer this affection in this way. Think about how much you love your pets or your partners or your friends or your children. Think about how you want to nurture and love their precious bodies. You would never feed them things knowingly and deliberately that were not good, poisoning even. Think about your body in this way. Appreciate your body. Feel it with your hands. State that intent. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm here to care and look after you. Now take a deep breath and think about one thing you know you need to change within your diet. What is it? Use my eyes of clarity, of spiritual truth, of seeing. What is the thing within you that you know you need to change? Not all of it at once, but the very closest thing to you now that comes up before your spiritual vision. And now I suggest do this thing. This question has been asked and I am answering it. Perhaps you're not ready right now. Perhaps you need to make a commitment of doing it in a week or a month or however long. But make that commitment to yourself that you will do this, that you will take that next step. And that is enough. That is enough. It's often too much to try to change it all overnight, nor is it particularly good sometimes for the body to have to deal with so much change all at once. My way that I suggest is to take the next step and allow that to process and become integrated. And then the next step, and then the next step, always loving yourself, always feeling into your body. What does your body need? What does your stomach need? What do your organs need? This living body that you're existing within, you know deep down. Sometimes it can help to douse over food of what is right for you and what is wrong. But really, I think you know already most of that which you need to know. Have courage. It's not easy. I am Sarah. I give you my blessings to help you along. You can think of food as spiritual nourishment. And one very easy way is to charge up the water that you're drinking. Take the water that you drink and ask that I bless it. Feel the moment that it becomes so and drink the water. This will help you tune in to your needs. 
this will help you love yourself in the way that you need to love yourself. I am Sarah, and these are the words which I wish to speak right now. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, amen. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Rachel. I think that was a very sensitive response and also a very constructive one about the way that we have a relationship with food and, and thinking about the relationship we currently have and the changes that we need to, to take in, to excuse the pun, bite-sized steps, really, is, is what she, she offered, didn't she? Yeah. And the importance of actually calling her in to do very simple things with our food, you know, blessing water and to help us perhaps make better decisions about food that's right for us. And I thought that was a really lovely point to make as opposed to, well, this is the wrong diet. And this is the diet everyone needs to follow. It was the complete opposite, actually. It was perhaps, you know, think about what's more per a personalised diet, really, for mm. each, each and every one of us, which is, is great. And I think people will find that very reassuring as well, that they don't have to all of a sudden make drastic changes. Um, mm -hmm. They can do those one at a time. See mm -hmm. how you get on. Yeah. And we can, we, can, we can sense, like, when we eat food, mm -hmm. like, how it, by the way it makes us feel, like, yeah. what food is, like, working for mm -hmm. us and, and what isn't. But I think it is quite scary to to change your diet I know for me like I've had to like because of all the health challenges that I've had I've had to change my diet quite a lot and you know I suppose the blessing in that is that the things that I have changed have really helped that <laughs> it's sort of you know I sort of minimize the health challenges that I've got through 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 the diet but oh my you know it's 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 quite a complicated tangle so it, I really like that idea of um you know get calling on Sarah and saying please bless my water and drinking it down and almost like drinking in some help I think also getting us to engage more with our food like telling our food that we love the food and we send love through food to ourselves and also to those people that we prepare this food for mm, I like that I like that and 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 calling in Sarah in that way you know, I found that like when I asked Sarah to help me with certain problems and like ask her to overlight my path, which kind of like drinking in the water is another way of doing that. Then the solutions get magnetized towards me. You know, things just suddenly appear. Someone say, oh, have you read that? Or a person will suddenly pop up and I see something about them and I think, oh, yeah, I have to talk to that person. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, she starts to she starts to to bring in the solution but she doesn't do the work for us Sarah nor should she I mean you know we're we're learning through all of these challenges and we become you know much more resourceful and strong because of it um but that doesn't mean we should have to do it all alone and, and we don't we don't have to <laughs> Stu Raj has written lol on here. I know. It's good to have it. She's definitely got a sense of humour. Have you got any comments up on the on, up on the group, Louise? Uh, very helpful uh, from Denise. Great question. Uh, Corrie, thank you for putting this together, you ladies rock. Ha ha. <laughs> thank you very, very much. There's a lot of gratitude and a genuine appreciation to Sarah and yourself for bringing this information. Um, so thank you, everyone, for sharing your comments. They are very much appreciated and very helpful for us as well. Thank you. So what's next? OK, how are the elementals and Mother Guy doing at the moment? Is there anything in particular that you feel we should be doing to assist them and also to support the bees and the animal kingdom? Please. 
And pets. Pets are in there as well. I was going to ask pets as a separate question, but I'm happy to add them all together. But it it was to do with some people have noticed a change in their pets' behaviour. Yeah. I think we can put the pets in there. That will go together? Okay. That would go out. Okay. Yeah. (sighs) Can't. Going to bring them in. We love the pets. So I would ask each of you now to sink down a little bit into your earthly bodies, to come down into connection with Gaia. Now Gaia is already an ascended being, not in her physical body perhaps, but in herself, in her consciousness. And the reason I say not ascended in her physical body is because she has made the sacrifice of having humanity be alive upon her using part of her body. And so she waits patiently and assists humanity where she can. But there has been a way of thinking, of being down in those heavier earthly realms as less than, not as spiritual, although this is definitely changing in the spheres of those who work with the divine feminine and the body and dance and sensuality very much blessed by Mary Madeline's presence, for example. But you too are all of the earth. You too are all of the animal kingdom. And you contain everything within you that they do. You are much more aligned to them than perhaps you realize However, you have this strong mental layer to your energy field as well. So you have something extra. So a good way to make contact with the elementals, with your pets, with the animal kingdom, is to quiet down your mental activity and come into your heart. Perhaps you could try doing that now. Take your awareness down right into your heart center. If it feels right, invite in the presence of the Magdalene, my mother. Feel the physical space that you occupy. Place your hands on the earth if you can, or even just on the chair that you're sitting or the floor. But connect down to the earth. How does it feel to you? You are connected through all of these layers, through all of these energy lines. You are the earth. You are the earth. You are the earth and all of her beauty and her wondrousness. Everything is made from the earth, from her body, your beloved pet, the whole of humanity, your houses, 
all of you are made from her body. Even the elementals are made from the vibrational fabric of the earth. It is simply of a different vibrational level. They are too physical, just a higher physical vibration. This is how you can help all of these different kingdoms, whether it is stone or animal, elemental or plant. Take a moment to connect to the earth and through all things that live on her in that way. Invite me in when you do this exercise because I can act as a bridge. I bring everything into integration and oneness and love is the key. Love is the key. Love is the key to everything. So just place your hands upon your heart again now. Breathe into that place. Knowing all is well. All is well. All is well. This is a divine truth that all is well. And everything that is happening around you in the world today is happening because you are all on a journey back to the divine. This is the journey back to the divine. It is inevitable, unstoppable. Feel that truth in your heart, all is well, all is well, all is well. And then place your hands back down again on the chair or the floor or the earth and connect once again to the different kingdoms. If you wish to help them, do this exercise and then ask them, how can I help? How can I be of service? And see what comes to you. Each of you have your own task each of you have your own purpose in the world, which is linked to your soul essence, your past lives, the experiences and skills you have accumulated over the eons. Each of you have come to help in your own way. All is well, all is well, all is well. You can also just simply spread this divine truth throughout the kingdoms, throughout the layers, bringing a centeredness and a calmness. This doesn't mean that there is not action to be taken, responsibilities to be owned up to. However, even while you take that action, even while you own up to those quite large responsibilities, it is good to do it from that heart place as you place your hands back on your heart again, saying all is well, all is well, all is well. If you can do this and act, from the place of all is well, rather than from the trauma, from the fear, from the pain, then your actions will be the most aligned to the divine will, to the will of your own divine spark that each of you have within you. This is a practice not something that you should expect yourself to fall into. This is humanity's next step. 
to come back into alignment with the divine sparks within you, which is held just underneath the heart center at the position of the Khrit Padma, two or three finger widths underneath the heart center. But to start the practice now is to support the evolution of humanity. Humanity is starting to bloom now. It might not be apparent. It might not even be visible. And yet, in truth, it is happening. Perhaps you can see it in some of the people that you know. Perhaps you can even see it in yourself. It may feel like a slow process to you. But once again, with that perspective of looking above, with the ascended eye, these little lights on the earth are becoming brighter and brighter, joining together and becoming fields of flowers. I am Sarah, and this is what I wish to speak. Blessed be. Thank you, Sarah and Rachel, for your answer, which was incredibly helpful. And I really liked the way that um, Sarah was able to reassure us about the divine feminine being more um, coming forth than perhaps people might realise. Um, and really seeing how she sees things differently from the, the higher perspective that all is well, things are a lot better than we realise. Um, and can be even better by staying as best as we can in our heart centers, despite what we might be told by the need or, or, or the sources. Um, and to call in also um, Mag Mary Magdalene as well. That was a very, very beautiful, beautiful message and the importance of, of quietude as well. Um, to go within, to, to find the, the answers about what we can do personally to help mm. the elementals and Mother Gaia. Mm. That, I mean, that's been one of the huge, huge kind of lessons that I've been working with and, you know, still obviously I'm working with. And that is to have that practice of tuning into all as well without denying the reality of the trauma and the difficulty that is in humanity mm. and to allow the emotions that are there at the same time kind of holding that divine truth of of like all is well and you know like feeling like whatever is coming up is coming up to bring healing to it in 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 whatever way and that's to me that's like one of the things that she talks about is like being fully human and and fully fully divine it's not to deny either side so it's not to go oh you know all those people in india that are being burnt on huge fires you know they didn't really get covid they're not really dying it's all just an illusion it's like going yeah that is happening and this is this is this is really really tragic but staying in touch with there's a divine plan and it's not like you know divine wants us to suffer or the you know the indians to have a terrible time there's terrible human suffering in this and then we have to really like dig deep into that divine spark or our hearts and just and just find the healing and find the love and and find you know that sort of very human but divine response mm -hmm. in inside of us and for each of us because you know that, I mean, I would say the biggest problem with the media is we can't take on the world's problems. We need to take on what each of us can do within our individual spheres. Yeah. You know, So I'm not someone who thinks, like, you shouldn't watch the news. On the other hand, I'm not someone who thinks that, you know, um, you have to watch it 24 hours a day. It's, it's all about, it's all about, it's all about balance. 
Yeah, because we have a sphere of influence about people that we're with on a regular basis and people that we can support. Yeah, and I liked the idea that it's a kind of reminder about changing our shift in perspective as well, that even though we might be surrounded by what appears to be negative news is that, you know, things, if we go within, we can actually find answers, perhaps better answers uh, with Sarah's help than perhaps what we're watching on media, mm. through our media. Thank I'm you. just wondering how many how many questions we've got we've got left. Now. Uh, <laughs> we have we have a few. So in I think we might have. Time, to, I think we might have to be part two, maybe elective. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we'll get um, okay. through them all today. So I think you'll have to you'll have to make a judgment call, Louise. So just one or two more now. Okay. Okay. Um, can I ask about ancestors? Is that Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, so I, I, I wanted Sarah to talk about this because like the last year we've done a, a lot of stuff working with Sarah about the ancestors, but it's sort of it's sort of been like the next the next level up. So yeah, it's been stuff about clearing, but she's also done a lot of teaching about each of us like connecting back to our like original line of ancestry, like where we started, like at the beginning of existence really and each family line like having a purpose yeah the sacred roles each lineage yeah. has been given and how we can tap into to those now yeah yeah and I, I just you know because I know this is just the beginning of something because we need to get a new understanding and way of seeing the ancestors um, rather than just our like immediate family and there's so there's so much support for us and you know, there's also this idea about the ancestors with a capital A. Yeah. And they're the ancestors that are just, they are, I mean, they're not angels, but they are that sort of vibrational level, but, you know, as our ancestors. And, um, yeah, I just wanted her to sort of, you know, whatever, whatever she wants to say about all of that. So I'll just, I'll just tune in and see what, what, what comes out about that. Tell us about the ancestor, Sarah. What do you want us to know? <sighs> Blessings, I am Sarah. Each of you come from very distinct ancestral line. Right at the beginning of time, at the beginning of creation, each of your ancestral lines were charged with a specific purpose, with a specific role or job to do. And then in order to fulfill that sacred task, you were given the gifts and the functions through your DNA that were needed to fulfill these tasks. Now, because you are living in a world of polarity, your ancestral lines have had to live through both polarities of being able to carry out these tasks and then not carry out these tasks because this creates the fullness of the learning. However, now is the time for you to understand and have more consciousness about the role, the function, the tasks and the jobs of your specific ancestral line. This might not be visible from looking at your nearest family members in fact I can almost promise you that this is the case so how can this be achieved then you can do it through meditating you can do it through if you have the ability 
tracing back your energy lines right back to the beginning. You can also work with those people who have some skill in this area and that are able to support and assist you. You can also ask the universe for signs. You can also do an oracle card spread for yourself. You can also use whatever tools you have in your toolbox. It is more that you have the awareness that this is so. Many of you talk about your soul purpose. And of course, your soul has an essence. Your soul has lived through lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes gathering experience gathering skills, some of which you will have brought into this life as an energy field around you. Yet I would say to you, do not forget the importance of your ancestral line, the ancestral field around you. Your DNA gives you powerful and specific gifts that your soul wants you to express in a unique way and here again we have another integration we have the soul the spirit the physical body and the dna coming together in oneness coming together in unity and this is where the greatest power is this is how you can manifest all of these things on the earth, in your lives, in your jobs. Not stuck up there on the higher levels, but happening right here, right now. Being the piece of the puzzle that you are. I'm here to inspire you to light that fire of inspiration within you. And now that seed has been planted, you can go away and see what comes to each of you. And it will be so. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be. Amen. Ooh. <laughs> I think that was a very important question and an excellent answer. And it'd be very interesting to see how many people have actually considered this topic. I'm not sure that many will have done um, about the importance of ancestral lines and DNA to, to work out what gifts are inherent in us and our um, DNA. That's, that's incredible. She was really getting into it there, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was kind of feeling it, Sarah, you have to come back because there's more questions. You're just only introducing things to us now, I think. Um, she was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, really, that really resonated with her sort of soul purpose or, you know, whatever you want to call yeah. it, really yeah. resonated with her, like, work remit, <laughs> you know, because that's yeah. what she's here to do. She's here to, you know, bring us into integration within our earthly selves and our higher self, not missing anything out, not trying to get rid of anything, but like bringing it all into like one place. And that is really how it all works then, you know. Fabulous. Do we have, ta do we have time for a question on Sarah's flame? I think so. Let's just have a look on here. Michelangelo's there again. Hi, dear souls. Oh. Deb saying, feeling Sarah's energy coming through so strongly, such beautiful wisdom. Thank you. Yeah, and that is, you know, that is like 50% of what we're doing here is so people can experience Sarah's energy, basically. Jed is saying, hello, watching from the Philippines. Wow. Oh, Wish I was there in the Philippines, but you're getting better weather than Denmark. I had to go and get a blanket because it's still so cold here, Louise. But my friend said it's still cold in the UK. Is that right? All seasons. <laughs> it can go from quite warm to very cold in a short space of time. So, yeah. Some wonderful uh, feedback and gratitude um, and thanks for the guidance and support to help us make 
better decisions uh, and to be more discerning when we, we do. Amazing, amazing answer. Thank you very much indeed. So, yeah, so one, one last one. Thank you. Can you share insights about your flame, please, Sarah? Thank you. So this is about, so Sarah, if any of you haven't seen it, I have this beautiful painting from Cheryl um, Rose Hall. And that's on my website, rachelgoodwin.dk. And Sarah is like holding a flame. And this has so many layers of meaning and I could, you know, like talk about it for like really, really long time, but I won't because then Sarah won't get a chance to um, come through and say what she wants to say. But for the last few years, we've been working with her flame and different aspects of her flame. So Sarah has her own vibration of the violet flame, for example, which is coming in and kind of clearing the way for our embodied ascension for our next you know step of the evolution and then she has a white flame of divinity which we're going to be working with at the end of the month i think it's the 26th and we're going to actually be like grounding that down because it's it's very very high vibration and it's very aligned sarah has her own host of angels very aligned to that host of angels energy and um, if you're interested in that there's a zoom call on my website it's up on the right hand side it says zoom call you can click on there and we're going to be working together as a group to um, bring that down and also while you're doing that work you will also be getting blasted <laughs> with all of this white flame of divinity and we're going to be bringing that in um, here in Denmark and also in um, France to Santa Marie de la Mer, because all of the energies that come in with Sarah, they don't just go into one place. We might be focusing in one place. That's just because we need certain places to focus on. And then all sorts of places get lit up, actually. It's like, what's that thing? So like, you know, if you hit a certain sound, everything in the room that can vibrate at that resonance will just all start vibrating. It's, it's kind of like that sort of um, process. And then Sarah has a green flame of manifestation, which is like her, this nature life force energy. And that is what actually brings it all together and ground stuff. But all of these aspects Actually, Sarah's flame is in unity. It's in oneness. And it's just amazing to work with it in, in any of those ways. And, but we're just, you know, all the time getting new information about Sarah's flame. She has said that by 2023, her flame, which, of course, you know, like I keep saying, it is a certain vibration of archetypal energy of the divine but her flame is going to be grounded by 2023. And I was quite like wowed when she said that, because I didn't know if that would, I've known about this flame for a long time and it's been sort of split from our reality. Like you can get to it, but there's a big gap in between like earth, physical reality and her flame. And I, I didn't think it would happen in my lifetime, to be honest. So, um, yeah, that's going to be here by 2023, but we have to do stuff to ground it. It's not just going to float down here by itself. We are the important sort of, God, like, what's that? Well, it's not convection. What is it when you create like a, a link and the charge can pass along it? Do you know what I mean? It's like copper wiring or something. It's sort of like we have to stand in between that flame and the earth and then it like comes down it comes down um anyway you all know what i mean told you i failed my physics twice didn't i <laughs> so let's ask sarah just whatever she wants to tell us about the flames go on Katie. Welcome, I am Sarah. 
So the best way for each of you to understand my flame is for each of you to experience it. It's a little like talking about healing or Reiki and telling somebody about it cognitively. And really the only way that they can understand it is by having it, <laughs> by living that experience. So let's do that now, wherever you are, as long as you're not in a situation where you can't close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And feel my flame rooting itself just underneath your feet, growing up around you, and coming to the top just above your head. Now this is the flame of unity consciousness. It's a flame that unites all the pieces of your soul. It's a flame that unites all the parts of your being. And it makes it possible for you to experience the divine truths while you are in physical incarnation. Some people perhaps would call it an enlightenment flame or an embodied ascension flame. Because while you sit within my flame, even though perhaps you haven't already achieved a state of enlightenment, you are closer and more able to experience that state of enlightenment. So sitting within this flame, just allow yourself to let go of your worries and your fears, your cares and your burdens, just for a moment, just for a minute or two, allow your body, your mind, your heart, your soul to experience a state of being in oneness with all that you are, coming into peace, coming into centeredness. Just rest, rest now. Coming into balance, nothing to do, but just sit here for a moment. Breathing quietly, being quietly. And you can allow my flame to infuse every part of your being, every cell in your body. Resting, letting go of any stress, letting go of anything, you just don't need it anymore. Take a deep breath now, breathing in this beautiful energy of my flame. Breathe in healing to all parts of your body where healing is needed. Breathe out all of that. All of that that needs to be let go. Feel the lightness from the flame. Feel the, the lightness that is in truth your being. The lightness that is in truth yourself at the centre of yourself. This is who you are. This is who you are and you can experience this state, this lightness, even while you are living on the earth. And this is where we are guiding you to be. This is where humanity is stepping towards now as you become 
more and more integrated. See the path ahead, the path of humanity lined with this beautiful energy of this flame, my flame, this aspect of the divine that I am a portal for, that I am a face for, that I am a doorway for. The beautiful circle of you and the ancestors going back to the beginning of time, going all the way around. See this whole circle lit by this flame of oneness, this flame of unity. All is well, all is well, all is well. I am Sarah. And I tell you, all is well. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be, amen. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, I had a really interesting experience. Um, it started off looking more the flame looked more like a candle initially a white candle and then it started to morph a little bit and then I started to see faces and I was thinking to myself why are you seeing faces and then afterwards towards the end Sarah mentioned about the ancestors because part of me was thinking then maybe I've made a mistake here that this shouldn't be how we're supposed to be but um yeah that was beautiful really really lovely to see the the flame change shape and colour. I mean, it's because I know, like you've you've worked with the different aspects of the flames, you know, mm. like like I have, and they're mm. all so different. And that when you bring them together, that's the energy that it mm. creates. And it's like something. It's almost like something else entirely, isn't it? It's like, wow. <laughs> so, well, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here. I'm nice and comfortable <laughs> now. <laughs> no wish to leave. Uh, that was really magnificent but that is that is what we're working towards um anchoring and grounding by 2023 which means that it will be able to like flow through all the energy grids of the earth it's not far off is it 2023 and you know that makes me really really happy because like at the moment we have to kind of have sarah to create that bridge for us to be able to experience it. It's not that easy for us to get there. But when it's anchored into the earth, it is going to be much easier for us to get to a state of enlightenment, basically, or embodied ascension or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And that, and that makes me feel really hopeful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it'll be very interesting to work beyond. I've worked mostly with the violet flame. Yes. So I'm very familiar with the violet flame energy, so it would be great to see how the next, the white purity one, uh, blends yeah. with it, with Sarah's angels. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's exactly it. That's what's been needed. The violet flame has been the one that has been the most needed because you can't, you know, the fact that we can bring in this white flame of divinity now is because there's been so many people working with the violet flame. Mm -hmm. It's prepared the way and it's sort of cleansed and cleared and, you know, destroyed the old stuff that needed to go. You know, it's like going in your garden and like, you know, pulling out all the old brambles and dead stuff and or whatever, you know, so that new stuff could grow. So, you know, the violet flame, that's why the violet flame is so, you know, something that so many people have worked with, that, that, that it's needed to be that, that way. Um, and, yeah, we're going into, we're ready to go into a new phase now. But I just wanted to mention, so we have a new group on um, Facebook. It's called Sarah's Temple of the Sacred Flame. And this is like... It's like a virtual space for us to create an energy temple that is dedicated to Sarah's flame. And, you know, I say Sarah's flame, 
she's the keeper of it really it's the divine's flame and sarah is sort of like the one looking after it and bringing it to you know i love that picture you know like i said on my website with her like holding it she's like showing us look here it is she's mm. offering it to us have a look come it's on it's actually it's actually behind me i'm not sure whether you can see it oh yeah i can yeah, yeah i can yeah, yeah, yeah. great mm. And um, we're going to be having, I'm going to do a free activation on the 11th of May for everybody who's in that group. So um, come over and join. I've also got some information on my website about it. Um, that's under the Sarah heading. So that's rachelgoodwin.dk. Look at the Sarah heading and it says temple something or other. And that's got more info on there because I'm actually running a priest priestess course next year to come an earth priest priestess of sarah and there is just some amazing tools and plans she has for us for for you people who feel called to that come and have a look and then yeah like i said there's the um zoom call at the end of may where we're going to be anchoring in this white flame of divinity <laughs> Oh. Do you want to mention you already have a course for ancestors? Just I'm thinking of people that might be listening to this either live or the recording and think, oh, I'd really like to delve more into to ancestors because you have oh. a course, haven't you, that people could oh, perhaps you. maybe. Yeah, could thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that, Louise. I'd forgotten that. Yeah, if you go onto my website, rachelgoodwin.dk, <laughs> click on classes, it takes you to my online school. And you might have to look through a few because I've got quite a lot of classes on there. But there is one dedicated to that ancestor work that Sarah's been teaching us. And you will find stuff on there that you that doesn't exist anywhere else. Because that's, that's the exciting thing about working with Sarah. She is bringing through like new stuff, new tools that, you know, just hasn't, isn't around basically and has like a completely unique perspective and there is a lot of clearing stuff on there but then there's also like this all this stuff about like yeah tuning into and finding out like what was your your family's like it's just just this beautiful energy at the beginning of our each of our ancestral lines that's just so divine it's just amazing to experience and there's meditations on there and all sorts of of lovely lovely stuff so yeah go and have a go and have a look on there <sighs> thank you very very much rachel um also of course so there are more questions that we weren't able to ask but if it's possible I'd like to have another opportunity to interview sarah and to come back and revisit those areas if that's something we can arrange in the future yeah yeah well i mean that's it we'll keep we'll keep doing this because it is like me and me i was joking with louise that we're researchers because like my my husband he actually is a university researcher and he gets paid he gets paid for it whereas me and louise we have to sort of do it out of the love of our heart because <laughs> of course I, i've looked for it i haven't been able to find it yet i think they would give us a job though louise don't you think so yeah can i do it by cv add this on <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we didn't even we didn't even talk about the fantastic sarah healing that we've been doing that has been an amazing journey so i just have to give that a little plug before we go because i have trained 13 fantastic sarah and the angels healers now and they all work with these sort of different aspects of sarah's energy the, the violet flame and this beautiful white energy and the green manifestation energy and you can also find that on my website under the Sarah headed and there's the Sarah healing and the Sarah training that starts again um, next September. And you can also like experience the healing if you come onto the um, sacred healing group circle. Mm -hmm. um, me and Louise do free healing and you can also find a healer because it is wonderful to experience it um, as distance healing. It is amazing to have it in person but it is also really amazing to, to, to have it distantly as well. And um, 
you can see people on there. I've got a list of, of healers. Louise is one of them that you can contact and get a really fantastic session because like she said, Sarah is an ascended master for our time and she's brought in a healing system. It's not really like anything else. No, and what's really interesting about it, actually, is the experiences that people, regardless of their background in terms of whether they've never had any healing before, energy healing before, or some people I've given healing to are very established, you know, Reiki healers. Uh, people come from all backgrounds and have really been profoundly affected and experienced many different shifts from having had the, the Sarah healing given to them remotely because of obviously lockdown it wasn't possible to do face to face mm. well thank you for today and um mm. yeah i know lots of people will be watching on the replay so just you know write your stuff just write replay on there hashtag replay and write your comments and because me and louise love to know and we'll be answering answering those as well um I'll just say hi as well if you want to where you're watching it from that's really nice so if there are comments, yeah if there's comments I can always jot them down and then add them to to further interviews as well so the information is always very very gratefully received that's right if there's questions for next time isn't it yeah yeah I think an hour we've been at an hour and something 20 something minutes Louise oh that's oh gosh yeah 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 does it time fly <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna shut up now <laughs> not for too long though <laughs> have a great time everyone thank have you. a great day and thank you very much for joining and for all those people that submitted the questions and thank you once again rachel and um, sarah thank you bye everyone bye bye bye, bye.